Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna and today we will be talking about books about World War II or anything related to that. Let's get going. So my first book is The Library Spy, a novel of World War II by Madeline Martin. Emma thought her job as a librarian at the Library of Congress would mean a quiet, routine existence. But an unexpected offer from the U.S. military has brought her to Lisbon with a new mission, posing as a librarian while working undercover as a spy gathering intelligence. Meanwhile, in occupied France, Elaine has begun an apprenticeship at a printing press run by members of the resistance. It's a job usually reserved for men, but in the war, those rules have been forgotten. Yeah, she knows that the Nazis are searching for the press and its printer in order to silence them. As the battle in Europe rages, Alma and Elaine find themselves connecting through coded messages and discovering hope in the face of war. And my next book is The Nurse's Secret by Amanda Skandendor. I think that's how you say it. I'm sorry if I said it wrong. Based on Florence Nightingale's nursing principle, Bamboo is the first school of its kind in the country where once nurses were assumed to be ignorant and unskilled. Bamboo prizes discipline, intellect, and moral characters, and only young women of good breeding need apply. And first, Yuna balks at her playing plain classmates and the doctors and less comments, yet life on the streets has prepared her for the horrors of injury and disease found on the wards, and she's now against friendship and self-respect. And just as she finds her footing, all her suspicions about her patients then put her at a risk of exposure, and well forced her to, to choose between her instinct for self-preservation and exposing her identity in order to save others. My next book is The Paris Network by Sirbon Kahneman. Uh, Paris, 1940, he pressed the tattered book into her hands. You must go to the cafe and ask the counter for Pierre Dres. Tell him that I sent you. Tell him you are there to save the people of France. Sliding the corner message in between the crisp pages of the hardback novel, bookstore owner Lawrence slips out into the cold night to meet her resistance contact, pulling her woolen bandit down further over her face. The silence of the night is suddenly shattered by an airline plant rushing overhead by an airline plane rushing overhead, its tail aflame heading down towards the forest. Her every nerve stands on end. She must try to rescue the pilot. But the straying from her mission is a part of the plan, and if she is discovered, it will only be her life at risk. So you will actually see a lot of repetition in here, especially with the country. That's just how it is. I didn't plan this and just I'm just really attracted to pennies, I guess. And because of that, my next book is The Dressmaker by um, I don't know how to say her name. Lorna Cook, I think that's how you say. Paris, nineteen forty one. As Coco Chanel's assistant, Adele lives side by side with German officers in the splendor of the Ritz Hotel. But Adele has a secret. She is working for the resistance, right under the Germans' noses. As occupied Paris becomes more and more dangerous, Adele will have to decide if she can risk everything to save innocent lives and protect the man she loves. Present day, Chloe's grandmother has never spoken about the war and it was questioned about the legendary designer who she once worked for. Now Chloe has come to Paris to uncover the truth about Adele's life. But, but is she prepared for what she will find? And for the power of her grandmother's secrets to change her life, family and life forever. And of course, the Paris key is my next book and, then, and it is from Juliet Blackwell. An American in Paris navigates her family's secret past and unlocks her own future. As a girl in Geneva, Martin spent the happiest summer of her life in Paris learning the more of the delicate art of locksmithing and her uncle's side. But since then, living back in the States, she has become private, more subdued. She has been an observer of life rather than an active participant, holding herself back from those around her, including her soon-to-be ex-husband. Patty's never really left Geneva, and as her marriage crumbles, she finds herself faced with an incredible opportunity 
returned to the magical city of her youth to take over her late uncle's shop. But as she absorbs all that Parisian culture has to offer, she realizes the city she holds secrets about her family that can change her forever, and that locked doors can protect you or imprison you, depending on which side of them you stand. And my next book is The Book Spy by Alan Hillard. In 1942, with the war's upcoming hanging in the balance, every symbol of intelligence can be critical. Though far from the battlefield, cities like Lisbon, uh, Portugal's neutral capital become linchpins in a different kind of warfare, as President Roosevelt sends an unlikely new task force on a unique mission. Their librarians and microfilm specialists trained in espionage, working with a special branch of the Office of, of Strategic Services by acquiring and screwing access newspaper, access newspapers, books, and technical manuals and periodicals. The librarians can gather information about troop location, weaponry, and military plans. Mia Alves, a microfilm expert working at the New York Public Library, is dispatched to Lisbon where she meticulously uh, photographs publications and sends the film to London to be analyzed. Working in tandem with Tia Tiago Sardes, a brave and honorable bookstore owner on a precarious mission of his own, providing Jewish refugees with forged passports and visas. Maria acquires vital information, including a directory of arms factories in Germany. But as she and Tiago grow closer, any future together is jeopardized when Maria's superiors ask her to pose as a double agent, feeding misinformation to Laura Stilgerger, a wealthy Swiss banker and Nazi sympathizer who launders killer's gold. Gaining the last trust will bring Maria into the very heart of the and threw her in a circle, and it will provide her with the chance to help steal the cost of war if she is willing to take risks as great as the possible rewards. And of course, my other Paris book is The Lost Girls of Paris by Paris Genoft. 1946, Manhattan. Grace Healy is rebuilding her life after losing her husband during the war. One morning, while passing through a Grand Central Terminal, on her way to work, she finds an embarrassed suitcase stuck beneath a bench. That's kind of odd. Unable to resist her own curiosity, Grace opens a suitcase where she discovers a dozen photographs, each of a different woman. In a moment of impulse, Grace takes the photographs and quickly leaves the station. Grace soon learns that the suitcase belonged to a woman named Eleanor, Eleanor Trigg, leader of a ring of a female secret agents who were deployed out of London during the war. Twelve of these women were sent to occupy in Europe as couriers and radio operators to aid the resistance, but they would never return home. Their fates are mystery, setting up to learn the truth behind the woman in the photographs, Grace finds herself drawn to a young mother turned agent named Marie whose daring mission always sees reveals a remarkable story of friendship, valor, and betrayal. The Book of Lost and my next book is The Book of Lost Names by Christine Hamel, Emma Traub Abraham. Sending me time sending me to Lena and shelving books one morning when her eyes lock on a photograph and a magazine lying open nearby. She freezes and it's an image of a book she hasn't seen in sixty five years. A book she recognizes as the book of lost names. The, accomp the accompanying article discusses the looting of libraries by the Nazis across Europe during World War II, an experience Emma remembers well, and the search to reunite people with the text taken from them so long ago. The book in the photograph, an 18th, 18th century religious text thought to have been taken from France in the waiting days of the war is one of the most fascinating cases, now housed in Berlin's central and landless bibliotheque, I'm some percent long, library, and appears to contain some sort of code, but researchers don't know where it came from or what the code means. Only Emma holds the answer, but will she have the strength to revisit old memories and help reunite those lost during the war? My next month is the Chanel Sisters by Judith Lith. It is Antoinette and Grandmere Coco Chanel known that this for something better. Abandoned by their families years before, they have grown up under the guidance of, of Pierre's nuns, preparing them for simple lives as the wives of strangemen 
on shop keepers, at night the secret stash of romantic novels and magazine scouts beneath the floorboards are all they have to keep the dreams of the future alive. The walls of the cupboard can't shield them forever, and when they finally arrange, the Chanel sisters set out together with a fierce determination to prove themselves worthy to a society that has never accepted them. Their journey propels them out of poverty and to the stylish cafes of Moulins, the dazzling performances halls of Vahey, and to a small hat shop on the Louis Cambon in Paris, where a business takes hold to expand the glamorous French resort towns. But when World War I breaks out, their lives are in irrevocably changed, and the citizens must gather the courage to fashion their own places in the world, even if apart from each other. So, I don't know, so I kind of have the base if I should put this book on. I actually might delete this part, just because, you know, it did say about Russia and Ukraine, and um, we all know what's going on with Russia and Ukraine, so I'm not sure if I'm going to put this book, but in case you are interested, it is The Diamond Eye by Kate Quinn. Um, that's all I'm telling, so I'm not sure if I'm going I'm right to put this on. Just because it could be sensitive to many people. So, um, yeah, so if you want to check it out, The Diamond Eye by Kate Quinn is the title of the book. But otherwise, I am sorry for Ukraine. I hope they're doing okay. But, um, yeah, so I just want to point, point that out right here. So, yeah. And my last book is The Last Dress from Paris by Jane Beer. It is hidden with a collection of girl dresses, London 2017. There's no one Lucilla adores more than her grandmother, so when her beloved granny Sylvia asks for Lucilla's ass assistance with a small matter, she is happy to help. The next thing she knows, Lucilla is on a train to Paris. Tasked with the retrieving of Price's draw and dress, but not everything is as it seems, and what Lucille finds in a small Parisian apartment will have us scurrying the city for answers to a question that could change her entire life. Paris 1952 post-war France is full of glamour and privilege, and Alice Ansley is in the middle of it all. As the wife to the British ambassador to France, Alice's job is to see and be seen, even if that wasn't quite in what she signed up for. Her husband sh showers her with jewels, banquets, and courtier and draw dresses, but his affection has become dis distressingly elusive. As the, main, as the strain on her marriage grows, Alice's only comfort is her bond with her trusted lady maid, Marianne. But when a new face appears in her drawing room, Alice finds herself yearning to follow her heart, no matter the consequences. And those are all the books that are set in World War II, so let me know if you have read any, or if you have any recommendations, please like, comment, and subscribe so that you'll be notified every time I post. And I will see you in my next one. Bye!